Whoa, 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 everybody. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. It's real vile time, baby. And I'm the G to the E to the R to the M. The T stands for the, but you already knew that. And we're about to rip it up in a modern way. So you know it's got to be Mr. Germ T. Ripper. And of course, we got the Tower of the Hour, the Princess of Power, Miss Killer Kelly Miller. Say hello to the people in real vile land, Miss Killer hello, Kelly. Hello, people of real vile land. How are y'all? How are y'all? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And of course, we can't go anywhere without the Prime Minister, the Sinister, Mr. Ruthless Chris. Ruthless, Mr. Chris. Tell these people what's really going on. Uh, what's going on is I'm really glad that I'm not ever going to be part of a shunting. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> and, and and if you aren't aware of what a shunting is, then you probably haven't seen the 1989 uh, body horror campy overload uh, movie Society by director Brian Yesna, which will be our feature film for tonight. But before we get to that, let's ca catch up on what we've been up to. Uh, Ruthless Chris, what have you been up to in the past couple of weeks? Uh, a lot. Um, we announced that we're coming out to your uh, your backyard uh, out uh, March second uh, with Ruthless Pro Wrestling presents Animosity. Uh, tickets are on sale now for that. Um, we are going to be hosting um, Jr. Bookwalter's new film. Um, um, side of side effects may vary in Toledo, Ohio, at the Collingwood Art Center. Um, the date is getting locked in now, so. Uh, by the time this comes out, I'll probably be locked in. We'll probably put it in like the episode description or something. Uh, so keep a lookout for that. But that's also going to be on tour. So uh, if you are interested in seeing it in a theater near you, uh, JR will be touring with it along with James L. Edwards, uh, past guest of the show. Um, so look that look into that. Uh, they're they're going all over the country. Aside from that, um, we had a nice night out the other night. Uh, P -Pod, producer mm -hmm. Peapod, Kelly and myself, uh, Mikey. All met up at a local brewery and we played uh, Brutal Uno for hours, uh, yeah, which it was is a, it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Um, get, definitely getting deep into the to Peapod's Uno vibes. Uh, been watching a lot of movies. Uh, aside from that, yeah, that's about it. Very, very cool. How about you, Killer Kelly? Anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been doing a whole lot out of the ordinary, like back to work after the holidays. I think for for New Year's, we oh New Year's was the, when our last episode came out, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, but I think for New Year's I didn't do much. Me and Chris just kind of uh, got drunk in my living room. Oh, didn't <laughs> we almost got into a fight over a uh, battleship game? That was fun. <laughs> was that New Year's? <laughs> you got in a fight with me about it. I, I she was in rare form that night. We were trying to play battleship. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, other than that, um, yeah. No board game with this broad when she's been drinking. She gets mean. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of drinking, <laughs> being a, a uh, substance abuse counselor, I get to go on my very first business trip <laughs> tomorrow. I'm flying to Florida for three days. I get to check out a facility that I send people to that need a, a little rehab. They need a little help, and I, I get them out of the Chicago area. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, if <laughs> you uh, if you've got... If you got a problem, I'm here to help you. If you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the DJ hook, I'll revolve it. Something like that, right? I think that was close. Yeah, yeah. Huh? We need yeah, to send Kelly there because her battle step etiquette sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna ship you to Florida, kiddo. Anyways, let's get this terror train on the tracks. Choo choo. We're gonna talk about what we've been watching, and then we're gonna dig into 1989 society. Uh, ruthless Chris, why don't you get this train chugging down the tracks? What you been watching first, baby? Oh boy, uh, I, I didn't even have my letterbox pulled up. Um, the first one I'm gonna talk about uh, is. A, uh, I, I'm a sucker for a cheap 90s ripoff, um, and I watched one the other day, which was a, it was mostly a ripoff of Predator. There were some aliens in there. 
Um, it, it was a ripoff of quite a few movies, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And that was 1997's DNA. Um, I watched this on Shutter, or no, not on Shutter, on Tubi. Uh, what you have here is uh, Don the Dragon Wilson um, goes to the jungle to support these scientists that are going to help him with some sort of, you know, because he's a doctor. They're going to so- help him with some sort of miracle cure he's come up with. But the, the, the only way he can make it is with these certain uh, berries they find in the jungle. And they trick him to going out there to actually help him find these bones of this alien they somehow knew that was out there that they resurrect um it's it's very much predator uh it's really silly uh, a lot of over the top action a lot of bad cgi a lot of dudes in um uh bad costumes jumping around great action set pieces like this this kind of thing was like right up my alley um acting was wonderfully terrible always like seeing don the dragon you know uh he kung fu fights the predator in this uh it's not the predator but i mean it might as well be the predator it can turn invisible and it has lasers and everything. So um, I enjoyed the living shit out of this thing. Uh, as I'm seeing, you can actually stream it pretty much everywhere. Tubi, Freebie, uh, Plex, uh, Night Flight, all that. Um, I give this thing three and a half. I had an absolute blast with it. This is like the kind of dumb fun I really enjoy, you know, like that, the, the pieces of the type of movie, like if they would have made this another five years later and it was all full of like, just CGI and they didn't have the practical effects that probably wouldn't have been as fun as it was. But I, I really enjoyed it for what it was. So that's DNA, 1997, directed by William Mesa, who only made two other movies, Galaxis and Black Gate. So, uh, yeah, sci-fi horror. That sounds like a wild ride. I'll have to check that out if I get a chance. DNA. Have you seen this one, Kelly? I don't believe I have. Nope. It doesn't doesn't sound very familiar, actually. Hmm. Yeah, this is the one I told you to stop messaging me during because I was watching Don uh, Don the Dragon's uh, jump kick a, a alien in the face. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, I remember when you said that. But no, I've never seen it. Does sound like a ton of fun. But in that yeah. case, you know, uh, check out DNA. It's on Tubi. It's on, it sounds like it's everywhere to watch, and it sounds like a, a fun action sci-fi horror film, a genre film, if you will. But let's keep the train of chugging down the tracks. And Killer Kelly Miller, what you got? Um, I found this one on, I believe it was either either Tubi or Freebie, but uh, it was Demon Passage. But it's an Australian movie, and when I was reading about it, I guess its uh, real name is Lemon Tree Passage. Um, Yeah, I don't know. This is 2014. Um, it started out all right, man. Like it was, there's three, three American kids. They're in Australia on vacation and they meet up with some Australian kids and they're on the beach and they start telling ghost stories, you know, and the one girl's telling that one story about like, you know, like the dog licking the hand, like, or the, it's actually a human like underneath the, I don't know. That one used to scare the shit out of me when I was little, I'm not going to tell it because I'm, I'll ruin it. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, they start, he's like, the Australian kids, he's like, no, we like real stories. We like, so he tells the story about this, like, uh, motorcyclist who died on this road. And if you drive down the road, the bright light comes at you. You know, there's a million of those, like, American, like, folklore ones here. So they go do it and it happens. And they're all like, whoa, that was cool. And the one girl gets a fucking nosebleed. They go back to the house and his shit starts, like, they all just want to go back. They all just keep wanting to go back. So they go back and they do it again. And and then some shit goes down. And you realize that there's something going on like in the woods. And then the story goes deeper. And honestly, the story just kind of goes downhill from there, in my opinion. Like the first half was pretty good. And then it just got kind of boring what they tried doing with it. And it was just like, ah, oh. this this one had um, potential. But now I got to give it a two and a half. It started out at like a three for me, you know, possibly a three and a half if they would have went one direction with it. But I think uh, poor acting and just like the choices that they made, it just, it lost me. Lost me by the end of it, unfortunately. Right, and you said this is Lemon Tree Passage? Lemon Tree Passage or Demon Passage. Or Demon Passage. Mm -hmm. Uh, Two and a half on Freebie Tubi? Yep. All right. Well, you know, uh, Australian films are often something original, something different. Uh, It might be something to check out. Two and a half is half a five, right? 
<laughs> yeah, that's what I said. It's at least average, you know? I'll give it that. I'll give it a fucking middle. Yeah, and if you get sick of it, it's free, so you can always stop it in the middle and be like, "Hey, it was worth a it was worth a two and a half." <laughs> but on that note, uh, uh, Chris, have you seen uh, Demon Passage? I have not seen Lemon Party Passage. I have not. I I haven't either. So I'm just gonna keep this train chugging along, and I'm gonna talk about the first movie that I watched. Uh, it was one that all over Twitter, when it dropped on Tubi, people were very excited to see it. And uh, I I get excited for things when other people are excited for them. So I, I went and I checked it out. And I'm, I'm going to say, I checked it out so you don't have to. Uh, this is 2023's Where the Devil Roams. Uh, it's directed by John Adams, Zelda Adams, and Toby Poser. And if you uh, recognize those names at all, you're probably a fan of their other movie that came out the past couple of years called Hellbender, which I was not a fan of either. <laughs> and I wish I had looked up these the, the directors before I'd started the movie. Uh, it's basically about a family of murderous sideshow performers that travel around the world and they're... Um, killing people and stuff and it but wow that sounds like great, a great premise for a horror movie except it's black and white okay cool it's a little artsy uh but then it's just extremely boring and artsy and the combination of boring and artsy makes it really bad like i started it out at a four i, I started the movie out like oh this is gonna be a four star movie because i like the premise it reminded me of todd browning's freaks kind of sort of and then like as it progressed i was like oh no oh no this this is not good um a lot of people seem to really enjoy this. I did not at all. Um, but I, I figured just for the premise alone, I gave it two stars. Uh, I, and that was me being generous. Uh, I know that I, I messaged you guys about this movie. Mm -hmm. I don't know if either of you took a chance on it or not. Uh, have, no. have you guys seen Where the Devil Roams? No, when you when you uh, messaged, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's that sounds up my alley, cool," you know. And then you messaged soon after, like, "No, it's the same people that did fucking Hellbender," and I was just like, "Might have to skip that one." <laughs> I watched the trailer and knew that it wasn't going to be any good. And then uh, when at the end of the trailer it says, "From the people brought you Hellbender," I mean that that's a family, that's a husband and wife and their kid that make those. That's why it's three directors. Um, I mean, I applaud them trying to do something cool you know i mean maybe one day down the road they will do something cool but their shit is just not for me like i, I think there's I've, I've seen two of their movies now i saw one other aside from hellbender i forget the fuck it's called but it was awful so yeah definitely not for me yeah like they're very consistent about like the pacing of the movie which makes it really hard to watch and like the style of their movies uh, once again is hard to watch and so it's just boring and nonsensical and uh yeah i gave it two just because i like the premise <laughs> so if you uh if you want to see a movie that everybody else is buzzing about but i could not get into it go right ahead it's on tubi it's free but uh yeah i watched it so you don't have to <laughs> let's keep the train of chugging along though and uh ruthless chris what do you got next for us uh, so this one I actually watched with Kelly. Um, it made a lot of people's end of the year list. It made Yori end of the year list. Uh, but I did not end up seeing it before we made our list. And I really wish I would have because I knew it would have made it. And that's Candyland. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I know, I know um, Germ had already talked about it. So I'll not you know go on and on about it. But uh, I was very impressed with this movie. Um, it has a 70s grit to it that you don't normally see. Um Especially, you know, like it, it, I mean, it takes place all within a, a sex worker community that of lot lizards, you know, they sleep, they all hang out at this gas station they sleep with the truck drivers as they come through. And there's a religious cult on the kind of outskirts. Um, the, the law doesn't really mess with them because, you know, the law gets kind of taken care of by certain members there. Uh, played. Uh, very well, actually, by one of the least well-acting Baldwins. Uh, th I thought this one was a great uh, um, performance by him. I, what was it? Steve? No, it was Daniel. Daniel Baldwin. Oh, yeah. He normally is bad in movies. I didn't even realize it was him until I looked it up. 
uh, as the sheriff. I thought he did excellent, but uh, it's a slasher movie that all takes place at truck stops. A bit of a mystery. Uh, it's very brutal. Um, it's very gritty, very sex heavy. Um, it's got some really cool themes. It's shot very well. Um, this thing really, really blew me away. Uh, had I seen it before we did our end of the year wrap up, it definitely wouldn't have made it. Um, so yeah, I mean, like if you like those like 70s style sleaze like movies, but with a good slasher element, um, the slasher, the slasher in this and this is really, really well done. So I highly recommend it. I give this thing four, four and a half stars all day. And I watched it on Tubi. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Kelly, did you get a chance to check out uh, Candyland? Yeah, I watched it with Chris. We watched it over at my house. But um, yeah, I, from what I've seen, because I was also doing a lot of other shit that night. <laughs> so I was, but I was like, no, I need to fucking rewatch this. It, it definitely looked awesome. I'd probably give it a four from what I've seen myself. Yeah, no, um, like I said before, I love this movie just because it is realistic violence. It is gritty. It is sleazy, but it's done really well, you know, because there are a million no budget sleaze movies that come out. You could watch a million different ones on Tubi. Uh, luckily, this isn't one of those that are horrible. This one is really well done, really well acted, really well shot. Mm. Um, I, If you are overly triggered by realistic violence skip it but otherwise if you're a horror fan if you're a fan of grindhouse if you're a fan of like sleazy horror movies then you should definitely check out candyland uh i just tried to pull it up to see what i had given it originally i know it was either four or five but yeah great movie definitely worth a watch uh but let's keep the train of trucking killer kelly what you got for us baby um, this movie that I got, um, or the next movie that I watched, fucking rocked. Uh, I first heard about it, they were talking about it on the Colors in the Dark podcast, and they're like, end of the year uh, movie list, and I never heard about it before that, but it sounded awesome, and it is. Um, it says this is 2022, but if it, I don't know, maybe it was made then. It didn't come out till 2023, 2022 is when they filmed it. Gotcha. I know, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's not streaming anywhere, um, but you can buy it or rent it off of Amazon. I bought it because right now it's the same price to buy as it is to rent it, which is like four ninety nine, and it was fucking worth it. So, so that's what I did. Um, this is written and directed by Juame Balaguero. I could be saying that name completely wrong, or it could be right for once. <laughs> but um, he also did like the Wreck movies. So, uh, but anyway, this movie. I really liked it. Uh, it's called Venus. Venus. I said that, didn't I? Did I not no. say that? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> well, this movie, Venus, <laughs> 2023 or 22, whatever. Um, it starts out with like a go go dancer. She's at a club and um, she, uh, you know, steals these pills as she's like leaving and shit. And then obviously running away from the people that are looking for her, trying to get, like, she stole someone's shit. So there's, like, a whole club of people looking for her. Um, she's running away, and she runs to her sister's house, her sister and her little niece, Elva. Um, she gets there, I don't, without going too far in the, into this, she gets there, and there is a whole world of shit already happening at this place that she gets to. And this movie, uh, oh, man, from this point on, it takes a really cool mix between, like, your modern-day, like, mafia crime movie, you know? So it's got the action of that going on, with them looking for this girl. And at the same time, it kind of goes folk horror occultish back at the building like the neighbors of her sisters they very much reminded me in this one scene specifically of like the neighbors in the um in the sentinel like the the creepy old ladies downstairs and shit definitely it, it had vibes of that going on which is one of my fucking favorite movies of all time but i don't want to go too far into this but it, I, I loved it. I loved the the mix of like genres they had going with this. There's awesome fucking gore in this movie. The storyline's great. It's uh action from front to back. The cinematography looks really really good for what it is. It's a very fast paced movie. I highly recommend this. I give it four four stars, if not four and a half. Very cool. Uh, you said this was available to rent or buy on Amazon. Yep, and right now it's only four ninety nine to rent and buy. So I just bought it. If I was gonna rent it, might as well, you know. 
I believe I only heard about it today, but uh, you know, from the description you gave it and the rating you gave it, sounds like something that I definitely want to check yeah, out. Well, Chris, did you see Venus? I watched it today. Um, it had been on my radar for a couple months. It was one of the ones I wanted to get to uh, my for my end of the year lineup, and it would have also made my end of the year. Yeah, it would have. Had I got to it. Um, definitely could tell it was made by the same people who made a wreck. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of cool mm -hmm. shots. It's very violent um from front to back but it has like a cool genre bend almost like a from dusk till dawn kind of thing going on yeah okay uh, um <clears throat> uh yeah i I couldn't recommend it enough. I, I thought it was really cool and really well done. Um, there was like a, like some really interesting ideas uh, presented to it. And then like, just like from dust till dawn, it, it feels like there's a movie and then there's a flip mm -hmm. and then like everything kind of just goes bat shit after that flip. Uh, so yeah, I would highly recommend it. Uh, I give it four and a half as well. Uh, definitely check out Venus. Yeah. Very cool. I definitely will have to do that as well as all the listeners out there in real vile land. Uh, but we're going to keep this train chugging along and I'm going to talk about a movie. I watch do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, now I blind bought this movie on Blu-ray because my good friend, Matt Harding from Severn Films suggested it. When I was at uh, the last Days of the Dead uh, horror uh, convention, because it was like buy two Blu-rays for twenty bucks, and I I found one that I wanted, and I was just like, well, it's twenty bucks, I can't go wrong. And he was like, well, why don't you get 1965's Bloody Pit of Horror? Bloody Pit of Horror is not a good movie, <laughs> oh. uh, it, but it is definitely enjoyable to watch uh and if you know we we do love our garbage we do like our shit fests here at real yeah. vile now uh this is an italian movie it's dubbed in english so if you're one of those folks that don't like reading subtitles uh you have no problems here but it's about a photographer and models that go to an abandoned castle to shoot some sexy covers for horror novels I'm announced to them the castle is inhabited by a lunatic who believes himself to be the reincarnated spirit of the 17th century executioner, the Crimson Executioner. Now, the Crimson Executioner looks like look like he should be uh, like an indie wrestler. I was like, if somebody doesn't steal this gimmick or hasn't used this gimmick, they're, they're missing out because this is a, a character from a 1965 Italian horror film, which is great. Uh, the the thing that really sold me on the movie was there is some really impressive shots in it. You know the gore, like the acting's bad. The the story is absurd. But then again, most Italian horror movies are. Uh, but mm -hmm. there's a like even on the it's on the menu of the Blu-ray. But there's a shot of a spiral staircase with uh, the antagonist. Uh, antagonist uh, the crimson executioner running down the stairs that's just amazing and then there's another scene where uh one of the victims is tied up in a spider web where the 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 bottom of the floor is just lined with like wires that if you trip them everybody like she's gonna die but the way that they shot that scene was so cool and so imaginative, especially for that time. It, it, it was really fun to watch, uh, but I gave it three stars. And uh, if you want to watch a classic Italian horror movie and you're not looking for anything like really groundbreaking, nothing that you got to think about, I definitely suggest a uh, bloody pit of horror. I gave it three stars and it's streaming everywhere. Freebie to be Fandor Plex. So uh, you're going to no, no excuse not to watch it. If you are in the mood for that type of garbage, <laughs> uh, fun garbage. Uh, have either of you guys seen bloody pit of horror? Maybe it, it sounds really fucking familiar. Possibly. Uh, absolutely. I have probably a long time uh, ago. Uh, this, this kind of movie is my bread and butter. Uh, mm -hmm. As you guys know, dog shit's my shit. Um, the outfit this guy wears, like he was saying, like, yeah, I don't know how a wrestler has it. Worked. Like, basically, the dude's is head to toe in like red spandex, and his face is like cut out of it. And then he has like a hamburger, like, mask on over top, just around his eyes. It's the silliest looking shit ever. Um, 
It's yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's not a great movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a fun movie. It's you'll you won't be bored at any point watching it. Yeah, it's it's a good time. Ch- definitely check it out. Uh, I give it like three, three and a half. Very cool. So we're in, we're in agreement. Three, three and a half. Uh, so yeah, check out Bloody Pit of Horror if you're into Italian sleeves. Uh, but boo, chicka boom, chicka boom, chicka boom. Here comes the train. It's pulling into Ruthless Chris Station. What you got for us, baby? Um, so I know a lot of people have seen this. Uh, you know, like I watched a lot of movies the last two weeks, but I feel a need to talk about this one because I think it's kind of overlooked. Um, and that's uh, the collection, which is part two of the collector series. Wow. Um, this guy, I don't know how the collector is not more of a modern horror icon. You know, um, you know, the first one was very much a cat and mouse, you know, a lot of traps in the house, die hard kind of situation. But the second one just goes balls to the wall, all out. I mean, everyone always talks about how crazy violent the opening scene of Ghost Ship was. And I like, I mean, I, I think the collection has that far beat. I mean, the guy takes out an entire rave in the first, like, you know, this, this huge group of people. And it, it really doesn't stop or skimp with the gore. And the, the protect or the, uh, the, the killer, uh, has a really cool look to him. You know, he's got like almost like this gimp mask and he wears black outfit. He never talks. And for some reason, like, It almost looks like he's got like little metal flakes in his eyes. So his eyes always have this like metallic thing. He's almost like a spider, like a human spider. Like there's all these little traps he catches you in. And when he catches you, he kills you. And I'm not a big fan of the Saul franchise. I think I would like them more if they were a little bit more like this. Whereas opposed to, you know, Jigsaw setting the trap meticulously and then having recordings and there's a lesson to be learned. This guy is just more like a sadistic terrible fucked up person who like is really good at making all this wild shit i mean like every room you go into there's like like bone sculptures or like these these like crazy monoliths made of like human parts sewn together um he's doing this thing where um he's chopping out people's tongues and he's keeping them all like crazy whacked out on drugs and stapling masks their face so he has all these human zombies running around his complex uh, but basically what you have is it's a continuation of the first. It picks up right where the first left off um, with the same uh, the same star. And a woman ends up getting abducted by the collector. Uh, he has survived and escaped. He escapes the rave. She gets collected. Um, she ends up being the daughter of a like almost like a rich mob boss. He sends some goons to go collect this guy from the hospital and be like, you know, you know all about this guy. We're going to force you to help us go get him so we can get this girl back. And it's pretty much them and his like house of horrors trying to go through uh, and get this woman back. But, you know, he's got, he's got his zombie people in there. He's got all his traps. He's got his, uh, um, it's just, it's a really wild movie. Uh, one of the things that really cracked me up uh, was if there's any fans of The Wire watching or listening, um, the guy who plays Bubs, which is the crackhead, plays a uh, Marine with a giant faux hawk in this, which I thought was pretty funny because like the only thing I've ever seen him in was like him doing crackhead shit in The Wire. Um, thought it was pretty interesting. Uh, the, the soundtrack is very much that 1997 pulsating new metal uh goofiness with a lot of like crazy shot cuts um the ending's a cool surprise um yeah i just think there's a lot of really cool things going on in this i think uh that this should be more of a franchise i think that they should keep going with these movies i know that they were record or making a third one when the pandemic happened they got eight days into shooting pandemic happened and they've never went back and uh picked that back up but I really hope they do because I think that this this guy's got some legs on him. You know, I'd I'd definitely watch uh, more of the the collector. And you know, I mean, they've set it up to where you could go on with this series. So yeah, um, the collection. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I actually I always thought the first one was a superior movie, but after watching this one uh, again recently, this is definitely the better movie of the two. And is uh, the collection uh, streaming anywhere? I watched it on Plex, but I think anything that's on Plex is also on Freebie. 
and most Good. likely Tubi. I, I think they're all pretty much kind of the same app. It seems that way. It definitely seems that yeah. way. Uh, Killer Kelly, have you seen the collection? Yes, I have, but it has been a while. I think the last time I've seen either of those movies was when I worked at like Allied, which is probably God a good fifteen years ago, you know. Um, but yeah, that is something I will have to revisit because Chris is right. That's a super underrated franchise that nobody considers. It's like, you know, and it is all set up to be a, a franchise and to have many multiple sequels made. Yeah, man, I'm gonna have to revisit those. I do remember liking both of them a lot, and I don't remember which one I liked more. I'm going to have to go back. What, That's what definitely you? worth a rewatch, uh, because yeah. I would say that uh, I, w I actually preferred the, the second one over the first one, which isn't common mm -hmm. for a sequel to be better than the original. Uh, so if anybody is listening out there in real violent land that can talk to some people that can talk to some people, let's get, let's reunite the, the passion behind the collector slash collection franchise and get some more of these movies because they are wild. They are bonkers. I gave it four stars and uh, I would like to see more of that mm -hmm. because it, it's just super violent out of control gore. And, you know, that opening scene, like Chris was talking about, uh, rivals the nightclub scene in, like, Hellraiser uh, 3 or in the Blade 2, I believe. It's just super bloody, but way more violent and, like, almost like a realistic violence. That's what makes it more intense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I, I definitely recommend the collection as well. Four stars for me. Uh, Killer Kelly Miller, one last round before we get into so society, please. What you got for us, baby? Well, speaking of sequels and th speaking of movies that need to be revisited, um, I stumbled across this on uh, Max last night. Pet Cemetery 2, 1992. I was just talking about how a couple weeks ago, I think I mentioned, like, I like this one better than the original. And it had been so long since I seen this. I was like, let's see if that statement still fucking stands up. <laughs> I don't think it does, you know. Although I really enjoy this movie, I don't think it stands up um to the first one just the first was such a iconic classic you know it is hard to although this is a great sequel this is one of my favorite like uh horror movie sequels you know i would maybe put it in my top 10 but it follows um uh jeff played by um eddie eddie furlong um his mom died recently and him and his dad who is a vegetarian veterinarian moved to uh what was it ludlow maine is that where they are and you know where the the first one happened they moved to that town and um jeff quickly becomes friends with like a neighbor kid the neighbor kid's got a real shitty shitty stepdad named gus he's um you know ends up shooting his kid and um there's rumors going around of what the Indian circle inside the pet cemetery, like after the first one and the kids kind of want to test it out. Like after his dickhead dad shoots his, um, his dog. So they bury the dog there and you know what happens, you know, it's reincarnated and shit hits the fan. Uh, this movie's really fucking fun. I like, um, I really like the actor that played Gus. Like, they, they do a good job of bringing a lot of comedy into this one, more so than the other. I don't know. I enjoyed it. I still give it four stars. I know you guys have both seen this one, but... Very cool. Yeah, no. Uh, I know that I've seen it, but I think it was when I was still drinking, so I don't remember what I rated it, unless I've got it uh, on Letterbox. Uh, I don't think Letterbox was still around when I was drinking, or at least I wasn't on there. Yeah. But yeah, I don't remember it being as as well as the original, but yeah. uh, it is a fun movie, and I've heard several people say that it is their favorite out of the fran franchise. So I might have to give it go go back and give it another chance. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, can't go wrong with Pet Cemetery movies. And you said it's on Max, right? Yep, I believe that's where I watched it. Yep. Very very cool, Chris. Have you seen Pet Cemetery too? Oh yeah, a bunch of times. Uh, this yeah. one's a classic. It is a classic. Uh, this is um, this is um when they uh when they would go through, you know, like they take a serious um movie and then the sequel just had to be like as bonkers as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. Um, this one is super super over the top. Uh, a lot of good gore. Um, yeah. it's it's 
really fucking it's it almost feels like the the night of living dead three or return of living dead three of of pet cemetery movies like it's just so out there and like it's like let's just throw everything in the kitchen sink and um uh, it's yeah it's a wild ride you should definitely go and revisit it germ because you will have a lot of fun with it it is it's, it was it's a I put it in to go to sleep last night, and I, like, woke right back up and was like, oh, shit, oh, shit, you know, and I was getting so into it. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I do love a bonkers film that, like, goes completely off the rails, so you'll yeah, have to go back and revisit it again. But in the meantime, I'm going to talk about one last movie before we dig into society. And, uh, man, oh, man, oh, man, I wasn't, I had no idea what I was in for. The Severin <laughs> Films is uh, hosting a series of films nationwide, and they're calling it January Jallo. And uh, I kind of just rolled out of bed because I was going to take a nap when I got home from work yesterday. And I was like, screw it, I'm going to go out to the movies. And I saw this 1978 movie, and in my opinion, not really Jallo, but it's called Closed Circuit. Uh, it is, uh, of course, an Italian movie, uh, but it, it's much more, much more of like a sci-fi movie. It's much more of like um, maybe an hour and a half long episode of Twilight Zone. But the premise is: after man is shot in his seat during a matinee showing of a spaghetti western, the police prevent everyone inside the cinema from leaving in an effort to nab the culprit. And after the first guy gets shot. And then they re they they do like a, a a reenactment, and the second guy who sits in the same seat gets shot. It becomes like oh okay, I I kind of figured it out from there what was going on, and once like this crazy well not crazy but everybody thinks he's crazy sociologist is in the audience and he starts presenting his theory on what's going on. It was like, okay, well, this is fully on what's going... That This is what the movie is happening. Uh, without saying too much more about it, I don't want to give it away because I'm sure that Severn is probably going to put this out on streaming services and is probably going to uh, put out a, a, a physical media copy of this because, you know, they put all the work into making uh, a version to be show in the theater. But yeah, it, I, I actually thought it was a great movie, not really a Jalo in my opinion, because the Jalo in my opinion, is a slasher movie, is a black glove killer. Mm -hmm. And this isn't that, but it is a great movie. I gave it four stars. Uh, and if it does become streaming or becomes a physical media, I do suggest you take a chance on it and watch it. If you like uh, Black Mirror or if you like Twilight Zone, anything like that, this will be right up your alley. Uh, it's closed, cl closed Circuit. It's a 1978 Italian TV movie and uh, definitely worth a watch. Uh, but uh, on that note... Do, do, do we've made it into spoiler town and Oops. we are going to be talking about brian yesna's 1989 uh body horror epic society and now for our feature presentation Goodness gracious gravy. Now, I revisited this last night when I got home from seeing uh, Closed Circuit. It's a completely different movie than Closed Circuit. Even though Closed Circuit was humorous, this uh, if you if you know anything about society, uh, you know all all the only premise I'm going to give you is an ordinary teenage boy discovers his family as part of a gruesome orgy cult for the social elite yep. man oh man oh man <laughs> this movie is bonkers and I, I i am actually a huge fan of this movie and i never saw it when it was first released because i thought that the cover art looked dumb uh, of course i was a kid at the time <laughs> i was like 11 years old of course i was obsessed with slashers and i didn't want anything to do with body horror but this is a bonkers movie yeah uh, will you guys talk about it a little bit Chris, you start. <laughs> yeah, this is my fault uh, that we watched this. I made these guys watch it. Um, I knew Kelly had never seen it before. Mm -mm. Um, and I hadn't seen it in a number of years. I 
I'm a big fan of Brian Usna. Um, yeah. I think he's really underlooked. I think he gets overshadowed by uh, Stuart Gordon a lot because he did a lot of work with Stuart Gordon movies. But this is, I think, his biggest swing uh, of all the ones he's taken. Um, what can I say about this movie? You know, it, <laughs> know. It, it hasn't aged well. I'll say that. Um, some of the things they just let people get away with is, as cheeky childhood fun. It's kind of stuff that land you in prison with a felony nowadays. I mean, like, it starts off like the 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 girl's like fucking ex boyfriend sneaks in the house and like tackles her on the bed and is like pinning her down. Like, no, you were gonna listen to me. I know all about. It. Like, you can't be breaking into chicks' houses and tackling them down to making them do what you want. Jesus Christ. Um, but uh, the the thing about this movie is. It does some really weird stuff with not a lot of money. Um, like it's this thing like is like it like when Cronenberg Cronenberg does body horror, he knows what he can get away with and what he does. This one just swang all the way for the fences. It, it was like it, if we pull it off, <laughs> who gives a flying fuck? Uh, the shunting at the end of this thing <laughs> is <laughs> some of the wildest shit I ever think has been committed to film. Um, I could only imagine what it was like to film that. Those sons of bitches were just Greasy. coated in slime and naked but for what had to be days. I mean, that was like 40 minutes of movie. And Shut it's it. like half their body is like stuck in like these weird special effects goo piles. And oh, yeah, this one, this one is like one of those ones where like when when I talk to it, like, like when I talk to somebody else that has seen society, it's always like a, just a really fucked conversation. <laughs> and that's why I want, kind of wanted to bring it here. You know, this is one of those ones that it takes a while. You know, there's not a high body count throughout the movie. There's not a lot of crazy gore. There is a little bit. Um, mostly it feels like a paranoid thriller, like a yeah. coming of age paranoid, almost like parents. It feels like parents for most of it. The old Randy Quaid movie. And then the, the final part was just like, no, fuck that. We're going to go into like the fly but done by the Animaniacs, you know? <laughs> That's a great <laughs> fucking description. The, fly, the definite fly, but more. So much, so much more. <laughs> go on, Kelly, what are your thoughts on society? Well, like, as Chris said, like, I thought it was more of, like, a fever dream, like, uh, lose, you know, like, this dude's just kind of crazy, like, when he goes to bang the girl and she's all, like, her body gets all weird, or the shower scene, too, when he sees the girl in the shower in the beginning, like. It's his sister. His sister, and He yeah. opens the there door. There is a lot of incest. Yeah, he straight opens the door, and there's, then there's for so abnormally long, like, you know that she's this. fine now, you can shut the door, and he's just like. Uh, you know, look at her up and down and shit. But yeah, um, but you just felt like that dude was crazy with the apple when he bites into the apple and all the fucking worms and it opens with him at the psychiatrist's office. But after a certain point, <laughs> Chris is right. It just flips and then turns into a, sh a shunting, <laughs> um, which is a crazy goo orgy. Where they basically devour a man. Goo or orgy feeding. <laughs> feeding. <laughs> they didn't really. They didn't really like lay out completely what it was. They kind of laid some groundwork, but you didn't really know exactly what it was. Like yeah, ah, they do specifically. The one say, guy was the Joker aliens, for no reason. You know. <laughs> I, but they said that they weren't aliens. They were like, said, around they as long said, as you have. We're not aliens. So they at least set that straight, but they never really answered what the fuck they actually are. I think they're just this cult that just like devours people through melting their bodies against and <laughs> multiple people get turned inside out through their anuses. Yes. They put their hands up their butts and then grab their faces. And then the mole that that guy had was in the yank it back through them. Like, and, that, and then that, he that had that dude's once. mole, his beauty mark. He's like, I have his beauty mark now. <laughs> what was that guy's name? Shit. Wow. Yeah. Um. I don't know. 
it's hard to process what I just watched. Like, I freshly watched this right before we started recording, so I'm still kind of, like, processing. <laughs> that was a lot. That's what I'll say about it. What do you What do you think, Germ? <laughs> One of my favorite aspects of it was actually that uh, actor Brian uh, Bremer, who plays Petrie, uh, which is the the um the nerd antagonist or one of the antagonists he is billy's um opponent in the school election yeah he played uh pino in uh silent night deadly night five and he did these movies back to black back with brian yesna and i think that's a very interesting fact he because... made four though he didn't make five he made four right. well brian yesna produced oh. Five. Okay. And he played oh. Pino in that, and he played uh, Petrie in this. And to do two movies back to back, whether directing or producing with Brian Yesna, I mean, I think that alone has got to win you some sort of award in genre film because that is mind blowing in itself. Uh, because Brian Yesna's films are all sort of off the wall, they're bonkers, uh, mostly all body horror. And mostly all usually contain some sort of Lovecraftian theme of otherworldly creatures. And uh, this is no different. I believe that the cult is supposed to be some sort of uh, Lovecraft sort of um, creatures that just have assimilated into society. And that's how I saw them, at least. And, uh, you know, it, it was interesting that you brought up parents because I definitely got uh, a feeling of a parent's vibe with the bright colors and i mean of course they're both filmed in the 80s but they both uh sort of had that campy feel to them you know when i Almost first was serial mom yeah a little bit yeah. of serial mom too a yeah. little bit of the john waters feel i can see uh, that that over the top acting that over the top uh wardrobe and it, <laughs> it, i i'm actually a big fan of society you know it uh plays on a lot of uh, hypersexuality and uh, people coming of age, you know, losing their virginity. And because I think the, the thing that they were playing with there too, is like Billy hadn't lost his virginity and everybody else when they did became part of like this, uh, this cult, this human wreckage of like just mucus and sex, and it was it's now, gross. See, but I'm I, I'm a huge fan. Of, I'm a huge fan of this movie. I'm actually got really excited when you uh, suggested it because it does remind you a lot of uh, Frank Henenlotter. It does remind you a lot yeah. of uh, Stuart Gordon. You know, the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is uh, like Videodrome or something like that, but it's not as highbrow as uh, a Cronenberg film. You know what I mean? Cronenberg, mm -hmm. you know, is, is disgusting, but he's artsy. Frank Henenlotter or Stuart Gordon is, is just sleazy and exploitation, but and still fun and campy in a way. And this captures that uh, amazingly. Uh, some of the um, some of the color scheme and the sort of the 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 um, the whole aesthetic of the film just reminded me of like the Video Dead and uh, oh man, what's the movie I'm trying to think of? Not Video Dead. Um, um, you know. I'm trying to think of movies that feel. Oh, like Terror Vision. Ah, yes. Yeah, I love just that, <laughs> just that campiness of it, and like the yeah. body horror and yeah. the incest, and uh, but it's just wacky, and it's <laughs> you know, uh, I think for some people it might be able, it might be hard to watch, but I, I just think this should be required viewing for anybody that is a fan of '80s genre films and is a fan of body horror, mm -hmm. uh, and it's streaming on Plex, it's, uh, so it, it's free to watch. Uh, I almost I wanted to put in a physical copy and watch it downstairs in my theater, but I get, I got home from that um, January Shalio thing at Music Box Theater, and I was just I was like, oh my god, going down a flight of stairs sounds so exhausting right now. I'm gonna watch it on my couch in the living room yeah. um, and sit through commercials. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I gave a Society four and a half stars. And if you haven't seen it, there's no reason not to. Uh, guys, uh, uh, what would you, what rating would you give Society? 
Uh, before we even get there, uh, I, I just want just a couple things. I, I we didn't we didn't hit on uh, one. You said that you thought it was like a virginity thing. I had uh, I I could have swore that they at one point made it out to be like they were raising him for this, like they were raising him to feed on him because they were like saying stuff like who raised them in their own home and acted like they he was their son for this. Um, but second, yeah. Um, did you notice all the personalized license plates? No. Everyone had a personalized license plate. Like um, the main character, his said "hoops." Uh, the one creepy guy that was making the recording, his his just said "ear." There was a bunch of personalized license plates, and then the other thing we didn't talk about, which I thought was a really wild thing, this was the one girl's mom. Who is just like this overly makeup mongoloid that likes people's yeah. hair, yeah. and like, but you go to her house and she's got like elephant tusk like decorations and Faberge eggs and giant decorative pots and stuff, <laughs> and she's like wearing all this jewelry and has all this like really done one well done makeup, but she has like all the mentality and f uh, faculties of like. You know, like maybe Randy Quaid and fucking, you know, um, uh, Chris's vacation, you know. <laughs> but with that being said, uh, I give this thing four and a half. Uh, know what you're getting into. It's a, it's a slow one for the first half. And the second half, you're going to not want your friends to walk into the room while you're watching it because there's going to be a whole lot of explaining to do, like <laughs> stuff like this going on. Um, I thought. A lot of it did have a little bit of a basket case vibe, like when the mom jumped out of the bed and she had hands for legs and no arms. And, um, and that scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, th this is a this is definitely a one of a kind film. I, you know what? I would have liked to see Cronenberg's take on this movie. Like if you give him the same script, like as you know, he'll give you the 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 highbrow version. Yeah. But you know, this is like the the Brian Hughes in a version of a David Cronenberg movie, you know? Yeah, I gave it a four. Three and a half, four, man. Four all day. Fair enough. But now, And this was your first time watching Society, right, Kelly? Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, were you taken aback by the orgy scene? Or <laughs> shunting, that as was, they call it? Like, I was warned ahead of time that I was like... I said something while I was watching it to Chris, and Chris was like, oh, it's kind of boring in the beginning, but that shit goes AWOL at the end. And when it started, I thought that was just... No, it just kept going AWOL, dude. It, was <laughs> like, <laughs> it didn't stop until the very end, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was... <laughs> I laughed. I did not give her... I just said it got <laughs> crazy in the second half. I did not That's tell I her said. in any way, shape, or form where it was going. No. Well, uh, there you have it. If you are a fan of Stuart Gordon's films, or if you're a fan of uh, Frank Henenlotter films, you are sure to love Society. We all gave it four or four and a half stars, and it's streaming for free on Plex. And if you like collecting physical media, I highly suggest uh, buying a physical copy of this film. It's definitely worth it. And as we were discussing it, too, uh, it reminded me of one of my short stories that will be in my anthology book coming out June of 2024. Um, the, the story is... Uh, that has a similar scene in it is called less talk more rock. And it's about a, a gooey, uh, otherworldly Lovecraftian gay orgy. So <laughs> I, I totally forgot that it's based on this scene. Uh, oh, so boy. yes, very exciting to watch society again. But on that <laughs> note, uh, we will be back in two weeks. Uh, we will have guests on. We will be having J.R. Bookwalter and James L. Edwards to discuss their new film, uh, Side Effects May Vary. And that's so exciting for us because we will be sponsoring uh, their film uh, being shown yeah, in theaters. And that's just, uh, it's a big deal for us here at Real Vile. And we hope and we are uh, that you will join us for such a, an event event such a wonderful event uh you guys what do you guys say to the folks at real vile land oh you want me to go <laughs> yeah that's it shunt you later shunt you later <laughs> yeah keep it sleazy easy sleaze <laughs> and on that note i will say keep it creepy 
keep it spooky, and keep it real vile forever. God bless America, and send nudes. Woo!